rejoice and be happy. The Vega Plus is finally here. But is it any good? Let's have a look. Before we have a look at the uh, Vega Plus, so let's have a quick look at a proper handheld. This is my PSP. 13 years old, still looks wonderful and still plays brilliantly. Everything on it works and feels as it should. And then we have the Vega Plus. Okay, so it's not quite exactly the same as Rick Dickens had designed it a couple of years ago. But, you know, it's not a bad looking unit. But all of its faults, uh, and there are quite a few, it looks okay for now. But let's take a closer look and see exactly how things stack up. If you've heard anything about the Vega Plus story, you would have heard about the buttons. So it's only fair we see exactly what they've delivered with this, well, finished unit. Of course, I use finished in the very loosest terms here. This is not a finished unit. You have the joypad, a power on button, a don't know what it does button, controls, some more buttons, don't know what they do, volume plus and minus, headphone socket, a charging socket, and the light to turn it on, the micro card socket, and the reset button. You'll be using that quite a bit. So let's actually turn the thing on and see does it actually work. So Here's me pressing the power button and nothing happens. And again, and nothing happens. You really have to push it in so much. I cannot emphasize how hard that button is to push. Finally, we get a green light and we're in business, but we still see nothing. Is it working? Well, yeah, if you look at the screen, it is a little bit washed out because of the way the camera's set up. But actually, this picture is quite clear. I'm actually quite impressed at how clear this picture is. Ah, but there is a problem, as you'll see in a second. First of all, yeah, the buttons don't work when you try and press them down. And I'm pressing it really hard to try to do anything. So what I'm doing here is trying to reset the screen so that you can actually see on the camera because it's slightly overexposed. What you can't see is as soon as you start to drop the brightness of the screen, the flickering gets worse and worse and worse to the point when you turn it to the lowest brightness, it's actually unusable. Uh, if you suffer from migraine headaches, trust me, you don't want to be using this. So we go back to the main menu. And let's try and get a closer look so you can actually see a clear picture of how the screen looks. To try and show that flickering a little bit clearer, I've actually made the camera zoom in on the screen so you can see it properly now. So if we go down to the settings and we will select the screen brightness and you'll start to see straight away as soon as I start to drop it now it starts to flicker. Some of this is artifacts on the cameras, but most of this is exactly what I am seeing sitting in front of the Vega Plus. By the time you get down to zero, the flickering is really, really bad. And now take it back up to six and seven. Seven is perfect. Seven looks really, really nice. As a screen on brightness level seven, the screen is crisp and nice. Okay, so let's play with the virtual keyboard. I'm going to try and type in a little stupid, you know, hello worldy type program. So, you know, if you know your keys, press pre, get print. Now I need to do a quote. So go back to the virtual keyboard, and I'm struggling with the buttons all the time. So virtual keyboard, symbol shift, I want to get the quote marks. Uh, oh crap, I press zero. Oh, and now the keyboard's gone. So every single character you type, if you're using the virtual keyboard, you have to go through this whole routine just to get a character. And again, I press it well, again, I can't even delete it. That is not very good at all. So like all of the units that were delivered in the past week, this is a blankety blank unit. It has no game. So I'm going to have to try and put some on there. Brand new memory card. It's fresh out the box. Nothing on there apart from one TZX file, which I'm going to plug into the machine and then try and load. Now plugging that in did not feel good. I wasn't even sure for the right way around, but it has gone in. So I guess it's right. So let's power the machine on. And it does take a little bit of force to press that button. Again, no feedback on that whatsoever. And we wait. More than a few seconds for the power to come on. Da, 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 da. Come on, come on. And we're booting into the machine. Okay, right. We go into the menu. We go down to SD card. Press the button. Oh, okay. That's not right. So, okay. Let's bring the menu back up again. And we'll try that again. Down to SD card. Press the button. And the file's not there. Okay. Well, that's not very good. Maybe because this is formatted as X, X fat, so okay, we'll take the card out and we'll okay, first tar and turn the machine off, and it's just died on me. Don't know what that's done. Okay, uh, hello, machine, hello, computer. Okay, it's back on. Let's try this again. Right, 
we'll do this properly. We'll turn the machine off using lots of force on that button. Okay, now let's take the card out, which should be interesting because, again, if you know anything, you need a pair of these to get the card out. So this is me delicately trying to get the card out, and it is not easy at all. At this point, I am muttering under my breath. So hopefully, I think this is now I can get the card out with any luck. Here we go. And yeah, there we go. Finally, I've got the card out. Whoopee. That was fun. Right. Let's try it again. Take two. I have the card in FAT32 format. I have one game on here. Let's plug the card in. Or not. Whichever way round it's meant to go. I haven't got a clue. And again, try it. Eventually, yeah, it's in there. Let's power the machine on. Let's go and wait a lifetime for it to turn itself on. And I think it's turned on. Yep, there we go. Nice flickery retro computer screen. I booted into the machine. Oh, and it's just died on me again. Okay, all right, let's try again. Power it on. Trying to power it on. Is it on? I have no idea. Yay! Okay, there we go. It's on. So let's go to the menu. And it's done again. I have no idea what's going on. This is strange. So at this point, I've taken the card out, put it back in again, and it's now managed to boot properly. And the game's still not there. It cannot read it. So I don't know if this is a problem with the machine. It's the BIOS. I'm pretty annoyed at this point. At this point, I should have followed my original thought. Don't turn it on. Take it apart. So, as you can see, four screws hold the uh, the back of the case on. It's interesting, though, because there should really be another screw in the middle, because if you look at the case from the bottom, you can see there's actually a bend where it's not joining very, very well. Which, um, yeah, again, it shows another corner cut to try and save a bit of cost. So... Just trying to get these last couple of screws out. They're, they're pretty grabby, so it's actually quite hard to extract these screws. As you see, the last one gives me quite a bit of a bit of a problem. But uh, we're getting there. So let's get this one out. And hopefully we should be in. Okay, let's go for the money shot. And ta-da! Right, uh, okay, not a lot inside, which will probably explain why it does feel quite light when you pick it up. Um, so, speaker, hot glued in, very classy. Guess again, saves a bit of cost, makes it easier to build it in the factory or wherever they were built. You have quite a small battery next to the speaker. Um, yep, yeah, it's okay. Flex ribbon for the screen and some copper shielding uh, for RF reasons and the ports and other bits and pieces that you need. So let's remove the battery and the speaker. Just get that out of the way. Yeah, that does feel quite cheap. Now, let's just turn this round and we'll lift up the board and see what's underneath. Unsurprisingly, not a lot, but then I guess you don't really need a lot to do what this machine's doing. Now, at this point, I spotted something, which I will show you clearer later, which really surprised me. And it would explain a few of the problems I was having with the buttons. But we'll come back to that. Just for now, though, uh, you can see the rubber pads where the contacts are. That's the chip that's holding all of the information, the processor, the RAM, all the other bits and pieces, and the screen. And let's just lift out one of these uh, very, very thick rubber pads. They feel almost like plastic. They are so thick and hard. Again, which would explain why it's quite hard to press the buttons down. This is what I spotted earlier. One of the carbon pads has actually come unstuck from the pad itself. So no wonder when I was pressing one of these buttons, nothing was happening because the contact just was not there. And it looks like rather than being molded into the buttons, they're actually been glued on. So this is me hoping that I can put this little carbon pad back on. I haven't put any glue. I'm just using the glue that's on the back of the rubber. Hopefully that will work. And just looking at the screen, we can see there's a build date of the screen of the 6th of the 9th, 6th June, June the 9th, 2018, which seems quite recent. 
But the chip itself has a build date of week 35, 2017. So I'm guessing these were not made at the same time. And just a closer look at the board, you can see the copper shielding there, which is for RF reasons, and just a quick look at the board from the top. So, overall, is this any good? Well, not really. It feels cheap. It looks, well, it looks okay. It is definitely not a finished unit. How anyone could think this would be <laughs> is certainly beyond me. And how they think backers are going to be happy with this, again, it's beyond me. But what I thought I'd do, just as kind of a little interesting finale, um, some video surfaced a while ago of uh, Chris Smith playing the original prototype that he built on his kitchen table, which I think was one of the units that was taken to the CES show in 2016 to show off the concept of the Vega Plus. And he's playing uh, Egghead, which is also on the Blankety Blank unit. So I thought I'd do a side-by-side -side comparison to show you what could have been and probably what is now going to be the only thing we're ever going to get from RCL. Enjoy.